are we are doing the second step in strategic brand management process, brand management okay where you need to plan and implement your brand marketing programs when we are talking about plan and implement your brand marketing program it relates with your brand elements brand elements so dalam dalam uh, dalam branding uh, ianya relate dengan marketing programs okey bila you buat branding ianya relate dengan marketing program uh, apa yang saya nak tunjuk sekarang ni adalah okay. according to cap brand equity model Okay, this is another layout that everyone can see from here. Okay, the the layout of color uh, uh, brand equity. We call it CBBE. Okay, CBBE model. Okay. So now, uh, in here when we have a product and we want to do branding or we want to create brand for our product or service. Okay. So first is you need to uh, you need to know how to choose your brand elements. Your brand elements uh, can be from brand name. Okay, when we are talking about brand elements such as brand name. Okay, so you need to to create your brand name. You need to create logo. You need to create symbol. Okay, and in the in in in, in logo and symbol. You also need to create a, a, a character, okay, a character. And from logo, symbol, brand name, uh, and character, you will uh, all this together in your packaging, okay. So you also need to provide a packaging for your products or, or, or goods, okay. And then one more brand element is slogan. Okay, other than that, it's a slogan. So these are what we call brand elements. Okay, brand elements. So you can choose what kind of brand elements that you want to to to, to highlight for your product and service. Okay, because not every or not all brand elements uh, that that we can that we can that we can create that we can develop in our brand okay? not, not all okay so possibly we can choose what will be the best brand elements in our strategic brand management okay? in choosing our brand elements there are a few criteria that you need to consider now you can uh, Fikirkan bila nak pilih brand elements ni. Criteria criteria such as memorability, meaningfulness, appeal, transferability, adaptability, protectability. So there are six criteria in choosing your brand elements. Okay. So when you already choose your brand elements, okay. You can develop your marketing programs. Remember, in marketing, okay, uh, the third steps in marketing process is developing your marketing program based on your marketing needs or your four P's: product, price, distribution channels, and communication or promotions. Okay, so product, you should highlight your tangible and intangible benefits. Okay. For pricing, you should show a value perceptions when you uh, choose or when you select your pricing strategies. In distributions or place, okay, you need to integrate the push and pull strategy in your distribution channels. In communication or promotion, you need to mix and match the several options in promotional activities. Okay, either. You want to use uh, traditional promotional activities or you want to mix with integrated marketing communications where you can use uh, other than traditional is like uh, offline. Okay, traditional is offline or you can use online, uh, online promotions. So when you mix together, it is called as integrated marketing communication or in other words, is IMC. 
So when you already develop your marketing programs uh, by putting all these kind of brand elements in your branding, you also can leverage of your secondary association in your branding. Means that why we need to leverage our secondary association, remember when you are creating your brand, when you want to do branding, you need to make sure that the customer get the brand knowledge. Okay, get the brand knowledge. Okay, means that in your in their consumer mind, they can remember, they can recognize, they can recall. Okay, from 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 your from your from the brand knowledge, from the brand image. So how to leverage by using secondary association. Okay. So what are the secondary association? For example, you need to stress on the company. Okay, the company profile. Okay, you also can highlight your country of origin. Okay, what type of channel of distributions? Or maybe you want to highlight other brands that also uh that also similar with your product and service. And what are the endorser that you use okay who are the celebrities that you use in your endorsement and what kind of act event or activities or programs that you that you want to associate with your branding okay. when you are doing these steps okay in your branding okay you are actually for the first part you want to create brand awareness and brand association so when you are choosing brand elements, okay, and developing your marketing program, you want to create brand awareness, okay? This is how you want to measure the deep and breadth, okay, of your brand through your awareness. To measure the deep, the depth, the depth, kedalaman, okay, we need to make sure your brand can recall, your brand can be recognized, okay? The brief, uh, you can in measuring the brief is through the purchase okay number of purchase number of consumptions from your brand so this is how we can measure your brand awareness from the depth and the brief of your brand for the brand associations okay how we want to to, to measure your brand associates either it is strong it is favorable it is unique okay to measure strong Okay, we look at the relevancy and consistency. To see the favorable, we need to look at the desirable and deliverable. Okay, to measure on the uniqueness, you can see on the POP and POD, points of parity and point of difference. From there, you can measure the strong, the favorable, and the uniqueness of your brand association. So, what could be the next? Uh, the next steps of in, 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 in your brand equity model is we want to achieve the possible outcomes here. Definitely the highest rank in your CBPT model is resonance. Okay, the top rank is resonance. So in here, you want to make sure that your brand at the end become a greater loyal, uh, the customer uh, greater loyalty to your brand, to, to your brands. Less vulnerability to competitive marketing actions and crises, larger margins in your profits or sales, more elastic response to price decreases, more inelastic response to price decreases, greater trade cooperation and support. You can increase the marketing communication efficiency and effectiveness. There is a possibility of licensing the opportunities okay, for your product, for your brands and more favorable brand extension evolution. These are some of the possible outcomes when you have passing through all these steps in creating your brand equity model, okay? So that's why for the second step is very important for us to plan and implement our brand marketing program in choosing our brand elements, <clears throat> okay? Now, look at this. Okay, as I mentioned again, uh, uh, choosing brand element can be from your brand name, logo or symbol, characters, URLs, okay, 
slogan, taglines, jingles, music, okay, and packages, okay, packaging. And when you are choosing the brand elements, you must look at from the criteria. Okay, there are six criteria in choosing the brand elements. First, memorability. Second, meaningfulness. Third is likability. The, these three uh, criteria, okay, the first three criteria is to build up your brand equity. Okay, to build up your brand equity. Followed by the, another three criteria in here, which, which are transferability, adaptability, protectability is for defending and leveraging your brand equity, for defending, for sustaining and leverage your brand equity. Once you already build up your brand equity, then the next you want to defend and leverage your brand equity. So the first three criteria are very important in choosing your brand elements. So that's why for any companies, for any organization, for any seller, for any marketers, okay, if they want to do if they want to do brand, to make a brand for their product or goods or services, first thing they need to create their brand name. They need to create brand name. Followed by logo or symbols and then put the characters. So these three refer to the first three criteria. Memorability, meaningfulness, likability. Okay? And then followed by other brand elements, URL, slogan, taglines, jingles. It's just for additionally uh, additional uh, criteria because it refers to transferability, adaptability, protectability. Why? Because we want to make sure once we build up the brand equity, we want to defend, we want to make sure it can be sustained. Okay, it want it can be sustained, and we can also leverage our brand equity in the future. So that's why uh, first thing is you need to create your brand. Okay symbol followed by characters you are so this is how you choose the brand according to the criteria okay next any questions so far ada soalan tak ada uh, kenapa madam ni tak guna saya punya kita punya slide uh, saya saja je dalam saya punya lecture <coughs> saya tak suka sangat guna slide sebenarnya okay when i study before during my study years I don't like to read slide. Okay, saya tak suka baca buku. As baca slide. And I love to find other sources. Such as uh, when I buy the books, uh, we are compulsory to buy textbook. Okay, during my years, uh, saya kena beli buku. Itu textbook yang tebal-tebal gitu kan. Uh, so, kena baca. And the best thing about about books, textbook, compared to this uh, online online books ke apa saja e-books ke kan uh, this is like one of the books here we have strategic brand management masa zaman dulu kulit tebal tau jadi the best thing is banyak photos banyak graphics and banyak exercises okay and it helps a lot for my understanding for each of the concept for each of the theories sebab tu kalau orang Tanya saya apa pun, I still can remember all these kind of theories and the concept. Okay, because it is because we basically study from the textbook 100% and we do all the exercises and the professor, the lecturers ask us to do the exercises. And we do not have this kind of SLT lah, student learning time, kita calculate, okay, 120 credits, kena bersamaan dengan student belajar, oh, tak boleh exit 3 jam. We don't have such kind of things lah. Kau nak belajar tiga jam je. After three hours, time tak boleh belajar dah. Mana ada lagi macam tu? Tak ada lah. Zaman saya dulu tak kira. Uh, lecturer saya bagi assignment. Every day ada assignment. Kalau kelas marketing tu, marketing tu kalau you belajar marketing dekat UITM, belajar kat ITM, marketing tu dia punya three credit hour punya subject every semester. Okay, every semester jam credit dan tiga jam credit, credit tu tak represent tiga jam credit kadang-kadang melebihi daripada 3 jam credit. Okay. And then we need to read a lot of article. We need to read a lot of cases. Bayangkan, kena baca cases. Saya tak suruh pun buat baca cases sebab saya tahu alangkah saya suruh buka open camera, web meeting pun ada yang malas nak buka camera. Uh, ni apatah lagi saya suruh baca case. Kan? Uh, jadi, 
Kalau nak bijak, nak pandai, nak tahu lebih, kena banyak membaca. Sebab you all ni, you all ni semua student indirectly macam student marketing lah. Because you're majoring in high tech marketing. Okay. So, your fundamental concept on marketing, whatever it is, kena kuat lah. Kalau tak kuat, kalau kita tanya pasal marketing, apa itu marketing proses? Tak boleh nak cerita pasal marketing proses. Malulah. Eh? Kita cerita tentang brand ada proses in strategy brand management pun tak boleh nak cerita how many steps what are the model CVV models malu lah kalau tak tahu pada saya malu lah kalau orang you belajar you are supposed to be expert in your study in your field tapi you tak faham you should be shame on yourself betul tak so that's why I'm always using other materials in my teaching let's say look at this Uh, I already posted or uploaded this one uh, in the ULEARN, okay? You can see from the ULEARN, I already updated the slide here, okay? Once you click lecture 4, there are two files there. Okay, two files that you need to upload. Uh, sorry, you need to uh, download these two files and baca lah. Baca. Sebab you all third year student kan, so... Tak adalah saya nak suruh buka slide, kita baca sama-sama ya. Ha, first year student boleh lah. Ni dah fort year, eh third year. Takkanlah nak buat macam tu kan. Ha, buang masa je. Okay, start eh. Tak apa tak boleh tukar tu. Tak apa lah abaikan. Okay. So, there are two. Two materials here. One is in PowerPoint and another one in PDF file. Okay, you can download it now. Maybe later. Malam sikit ke, esok ke, sebulan lepas ke, ah, terpulang pada awak lah. Ah, okay. Sebelum midterm exam, sebelum uh, final assessment ke, ah, terpulang pada awak. Tapi, whatever it is, saya tahu, if you habis, you kena faham apa itu brand new. Okay. Then, we proceed with uh, this one. The one that I want to show it to you. Okay. This one. Okay. Choosing brand elements to be. Why I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing this, this PDF file? It is because I think it's quite uh, interesting to share with you, okay? When I take a look at the slide, it's quite, it's quite, uh, quite interesting, okay? So, it is quite similar with Keller slide PowerPoint, the one that I gave it to you in the ULEARN, tapi dia lagi banyak... Uh, graphics. Lebih banyak some of the photos, okay, to provide for the examples, right. So, brand elements aka or other than that, okay, aka that we call it brand identities, okay. Are those trademark, trademarkable devices, okay, those trademarkable can be a trademark devices that serve to identify and differentiate the brand. So, this is the definition of brand elements, aka brand identity. Okay, it's a trademarkable devices that to identify and differentiate the brand in the market. Okay, so such brand element includes so on so forth. Okay, you can read by yourself. So, in choosing your brand elements, you must look at the criteria, six criteria. Six criteria ni, kau tampal lah kat bilik. Okay, tanpa kat bilik ke, kat mana lah. Tanpa bagi ingat. Sampai habis. Sampai habis, oh, apa, degree. Sebab you all degree high tech marketing, jangan bagi malu, tak reti tentang brand. Okay, kalau student marketing tak tahu pasal branding, ah, bungkus lah awak punya ah, tu, degree tu. Okay, so you need to understand what are the six criteria. So, after this, you must remember Okay, what are the six criteria? Start from memorability, meaningfulness, likability, transferability, adaptability, protectability. So, these are the six criteria. And you need to understand each of the criteria. For example, memorability. Kenapa kita panggil memorability? It is because it's easily to recognize, it's easily to recall. When you look at the brand name, it's easy to pronounce, it's easy to say. Okay, when you look at Mami, Maggi, okay, Cadbury, uh, Proton, Nike. Kan senang nak sebut, senang nak tengok, senang nak ingat. Betul tak? 
KFC, MACD. Uh, this is what we call memorability criteria in the branding. Meaningfulness, descriptive or persuasive. Uh, tengoklah kat bawah-bawah ni ada explanation. Uh, memorability, where elements should inherently be memorable and action getting, therefore facilitate recall and recognition. For example, Blue Rhino, Coca-Cola. Okay, when you see Coca-Cola, the brand name of Coca-Cola is, it becomes your uh, your memorability criteria because it's easy to, to recognize. It's easy to recall. When you want to say, I want to drink Coke. So, it's easy to recall and recognize. Okay, when you see the, 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 the logo and the symbol with the red wordings, ah, this is belong to Coca-Cola, right? Blue Rhino. You see the Blue Rhino with the with the character of rhinoceros, okay? Character of rhinoceros. Colors, using blue colors. And definitely become memorability because it's easy to recall and recognize. Faham ke tidak? Aha. Aha, madam. Kan cakap-cakap dah petang-petang kan? Saya malah nak cakap. Kan cakap, cakap apa tu kan tidur je semua. Haa, ah, tak tidur. Awak, awak ingat saya tak, saya pun penat tau cakap daripada pagi tadi dengan kelas marketing tahun satu. Okay, ni pula nak cakap dengan tahun tiga. Cerita pula pasal branding. Bukan awak saja mengantuk, saya pun mengantuk. Sebab asyik benda sama je dia cakap kan. Haa, ah, nak pula kalau student Baca, tak datang kelas, aduh, saya nak kena ingat balik. Okay. And then second criteria, meaningfulness. Ini kalau tak faham, tak tahulah. Dah macam-macam saya bagi kan. Tak faham, tak tahulah. Okay. Brand element must take on all kinds of whether either descriptive or persuasive. Descriptive, ah, you baca, you nampak, you boleh baca. You boleh sebut, you boleh aja. Ah, itu descriptive lah. Persuasive ni maksudnya, oh, you can be persuaded. Okay, bila you tengok je ada 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 something that pushing you, okay, to like that 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 product, that brand, okay. Two particularly important criteria: general information about the nature of the product. Number two is specific information about particular attribute and benefit of the product. So these are uh, 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 relate with the descriptive or persuasive content. Okay, for example, Samsung Galaxy S6. Okay, so the first dimension is an important determinant of brand awareness and salience. And the second is brand image and positioning. So, kenapa kita kena bagi dua uh, particularly important criteria for the meaningfulness ni? Kena melihat kepada general information and specific information. Sebab apa? Kita nak pastikan bila kita cerita tentang produk ni, it relate dengan macam Samsung ni, it relate with the smartphone lah. Janganlah Samsung, you ingat kit. You ingat uh, apa tu, fast food, uh, salah lah. And the nature of the product category is smartphone under telecommunication. Jangan you pergi tengok Samsung Galaxy S6, kamu fikir fast food. Sama macam KFC, McDonald. Itu salah lah. Tak ada meaning langsung. So it must give meaning, meaningfulness. And then what else kita nak tahu tentang, tentang, tentang Samsung? Kena lah bagi specific information. Contohnya Samsung apa? Samsung Galaxy S6. Okay, dia ada banyak generation kan? Ada banyak generation, ada banyak modul. So, sekarang ni uh, yang kalau kita tengok Samsung apa yang paling terkini, saya tak saya tak keep updated with the Samsung punya modul. Yang saya tahu, uh, iPhone uh, 11 Pro Max. Uh, sekarang dah masuk 12 ke? Ke uh, yang latest punya 11 Pro Max. Saya tak ingat. Macam tu dah lebih kurang. 12 dah ya, 12. Saya lambat sikit dah, 12 dah. Tengok. So, inilah maksud in specific information. What are particular attributes and benefits of the brand. So, kenapa kita kena ada dua general and specific information ni? Sebab nak lihat dimension ni. Sebab kita nak create awareness and salience. Dan satu second tu, brand image dengan position. Ingat dalam CD folder, first layer, awareness and salience, second dengan brand image dengan position ni. Okay, macam sama juga macam ni, Skafe punya logo, Toys R Us, Pizza Hut. Okay, pizza kita tahu pizza. General information is a type of food lah. Okay, kan? Ada fast food, kita tahu. Uh, pizza Hut. Okay. 
So Nescafe is a kind of uh, drinks, kan? Uh, Nescafe, coffee, Nescafe. Okay, Toys R Us uh, for toys, okay? Uh, kids or children's uh, toys, okay? So this is this is what we call meaningful. So bila dia create logo, so kita ingat elements tu apa? Brand elements tu datang dalam bentuk brand names dalam bentuk URLs okey tahu tak URLs tu apa hello you all tahu tak apa tu URLs saya cerita-cerita kan tak tahu pun URLs apa tu URLs net link apa dia URL tu macam link ah tahu link apa nama penuh URL Betul lah, link tu www. Uniforms, resources, locators. Oh, very good. Okay. Uh, excellent. Uh, sempat Google. Kan? Okay lah. That's great. Okay. So, so, balik. Okay. Likeability. Likeability in order for a brand to be likeable. Kita nak sukakan brand tu. Macam mana kita nak jadi kalau orang suka brand kita? So you need to ask all yourself two questions, okay? You need to ask yourself these two questions. Do customer find the brand element aesthetically appealing? Are the brand elements likable visually, verbally or other ways? So orang suka awak sebab apa? Sebab tengok daripada luarannya, dah suka, uh, uh, features appeal, ataupun sebab visually, atau verbally or other ways, okay? So, brand elements can be rich in imagery and inherently fun and engaging even if not always related to the product. Sometimes it's not really related to the product. Tapi dia ada, dia ada this kind of likability criteria. Okay, contohnya Alienware. Nampak ada macam dalam logo ni ada bentuk alien kan? Uh, lepas tu Dell. Tengok Dell punya logo macam tu. With the brand name Dell. BMW. Okay, this kind of logo. So, dia ada macam Likeability, visually. Kenapa orang suka brand tu? Okay, sometimes people like because of the brand name, because of the logo, because of the symbol. There are so many. Bila kita cakap saya suka sebab saya suka tengok. Uh, sebab saya, saya, saya suka dengan brand name. Saya, I want to be part of this brand. Because people are, 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 are using uh, or Uh, buying this handbag Louis Vuitton, okay? Louis Vuitton. Kenapa orang suka LV? Louis Vuitton. It looks like a high class people who are wearing a handbag. Okay, kenapa? Uh, that is why. Either it is because of the label, because of the logo itself, LV. LV to, that means belong to any high class people. Okay? Or maybe when you look at the LV logo, is the, the visual of the logo is very very what we call it uh, is look like uh, exclusive premium uh, when you say louis vuitton when people hear when you when you spell it out louis vuitton orang dengar oh, louis vuitton dia pakai handbag apa louis vuitton uh, apa maksud macam tu lah awak pakai kereta apa bmw mercedes bila orang sebut mes pakai kereta apa sekarang mes So this is what we call it likability criteria. Okay, this is another contoh of what we call is uh, visually and verbally. So, eh? uh, I think this is quite urgent. Start urgent. Nanti saya boleh tahu. Hello, Mak. Hello. Okay, I must get that phone because that is my mom. Ini angkat mama telefon. Okay. Alright, uh, this is another example of likability criteria. Tengok, tengok bento ni. Wow, nice eh. Lunchbot.com. Lunchbot.com. Oh, Big Hero 6 bento lunch. 
Bila you tengok Happy Meal punya packaging ni, ah, ni antara brand elements kan, brand elements include packaging. Bila tengok packaging Happy Meal, McDonald ni, look at there are so many colors, characters, wording, brand names, MACD, logo. So, this is why people like McDonald. The transferability, it measures the extent to which the brand elements add or advertisement to the brand equity for new product or in the new market for the product. For example, there are two criteria in transferability. How useful is the brand element for the line or category extension? In general, the less specific the name, the more easily it can be transferred. For example, Amazon. Bazooka, contohnya lah, Maggie, Mami, okay, KFC. Uh, Nike, okay. To what extent does the brand element add to brand equity across geographic boundaries and markets? And macam mana you nak bawa brand ni keluar negara across the geographic boundaries yeah, for international market, for other market, uh, local markets to international market. So to what extent how this brand element can add to your brand equity? For example, Coca-Cola is a worldwide brand. Pepsi is a worldwide brand. Okay, so how can you measure this? In your brand elements so make sure that when you put your brand name your logo your symbol your urls your your characters uh, your packaging so on so forth you must have transferability starting transferability dia nak buat uh, dia dah lebih kepada uh, defensive dengan uh, leveraging your brand okay dah masuk ni tiga kriteria yang terakhir Adaptability. Adaptability, the more adaptable and flexible the brand element. You all faham ke ni? Senyap apa je ni? Hello? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah, faham, faham. Faham ke? Faham ke? Ke tidur? Sebelah tu ada bantan. Jangan tidur tau. Sikit aja lagi. Lepas ni, you all boleh tidur. Adaptability. The more adaptable and flexible the brand element, the easier is to update its changes in consumer values and opinions. For example, logos and characters can be given a new look or new design to make them appear more modern and relevant. Sebab tu kalau kita tengok, uh, kebanyakannya logo and symbol dia akan ada transformation. Because why the transformation ataupun kita panggil dia ada, what is the word eh? I forgot. Hmm. Tak apalah transformation lah. Nanti saya tengok ingat balik to the word. Uh, they must have transformation according to to the criteria of adaptability criteria. Sebab kita kena adapt pada situasi. Like uh, like uh, this generation for this generation uh, people are looking for this kind of uh, kalau tengok logo tu mesti short Mesti visually, mesti ada um, refresh look, modern look. So, kalau dah become obsolete, you need to to do some changes, okay? Some, some changes in your logo. So that it will counter back your adaptability criteria, okay? Because we need to adapt with the situation. We need to adapt with the what the customer may values and opinions okay so for example logos and character can be given a new look or even or a new design to make them appear more modern and relevant. for example this is the old fifa world world cup in brazil 2014 and go for fifa world cup russia 2018 and this is the old nescafe logo and this is the new nescafe logo This is the old Disney Channel logo and this is the new channel of Disney Channel logo. Bacardi and this is the old Bacardi logo. Bacardi new look. Reebok old look and new look of Reebok here. Okay, banyak lagi. So, there are so many examples that just look for this adaptability criteria in your branding. Okay, the last criteria, adaptability. Marketers, sellers, uh, companies should choose brand element that can be legally protected. Okay, whatever it is, when you create your brand name, logo, symbol, URL, packaging, uh, jingles, okay, characters, you must make sure it's 
legally protected okay internationally so you must pattern your dog when the trademark get the trademark get the ip get the patterns okay so this is how to protect your brand formally registered chosen brand animal with appropriate legal bodies vigorously defend trademarks from unauthorized competitive litigation because we want to avoid infringement infringement okay sebab kalau you you uh, buat plagiarism for example you are copying copy copy by uh, you are uh, you are copy from from others okay uh, so you will get infringement okay uh, this is what we call it uh, legal actions that can be taken for those who are doing this kind of misleading actions uh, for example here yeah, Nike banyak eh uh, unauthorized competitive infringement kat sini Nike hide lah berapa banyak dah Nike 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 Mike Kuma jadi Koma Punch Chima Pina Jana, Puma, tapi logo ni lebih kurang sama je ni, terbalik sikit dia punya Puma tu Kan? Color lain, Ampu, Puma See? That's why when you, when you get IP, intellectual property Okay, you can protect your brand elements Okay, kita tu contoh ni, Albaik, Albaq Nampak tak? Restaurant eh, restaurant yang sama ni very very famous restaurant di uh, Saudi Arabia Al Bayt, ni Al Bak. So the concept behind the brand behind the leaves cook, for example cook, okay, we borrow ah, okay this is a Polish vodka, okay liquor. Zivarova, sebutannya Zivarova, Chivi, Rolly. Alam terima kasih ni kan? Ani kita panggil protectability criteria. Ani copyright. Ani dah semua dah ada protected for their brand elements. Ani logo Chevrolet, Coca Cola. Ani pun ada terima apa? King of Beer, okay, Budweiser. So the simplicity and ease of pronunciation and spelling so nah, kalau you nak create your own brand name janganlah create yang nama panjang-panjang yang you rasa bombastic name but it's complicated to pronounce it janganlah tak payahlah think that because you want to market to the, to the marketplace you want to to sell it to the to your consumer to your customer so make it simple make it easy to pronounce because not only you are selling for your local market Maybe one fine day you want to sell it to your international market. So it's easy if you just make us make it simple and easy to pronounce. So how to name a brand according to Landor brand name taxonomy? Ya yeah, kita ada guideline lah. Okay, what is Landor? Kita ada Landor Associate as in Landor Associate. Apa itu Landor? So student yang belajar branding mesti biasa dengan Landor. Okay. Lando is a brand consulting firm founded in 1941. 1941 eh dah wujud dah. You dah lahir belum? Saya pun dah lahir. Okay. By Walter Lando who pioneered some research design consulting methods that the branding industry still uses. So starting in the year 1940 until now, we are still using their theories, their measures. They have their theories and concept. Okay, for example, like this one. How to name a brand, how to do a naming your brand. So, yang kata descriptive suggestive compound ni, kita guna theory daripada Landos lah. Landos brand name taxonomy. Uh, ni adalah guideline yang kita gunakan. Untuk, untuk, untuk create our brand name. So, Landos Associate is the brand consulting firm. Consulting firm that is expert in branding okay so tak tahu oh, tak tahu. so the the lando brand name taxonomy they are like descriptive suggestive compounds classical arbitrary classical uh, ni saya dah bagi contoh-contoh setiap satu contohnya logo yang membawa kepada descriptive 
Singapore Airlines. Kita tengok dia Singapore Airlines, kita dah tahu dah describe the function meteorologi. Jadi saya nak airline. Okay. Uh, suggestive benefit of function. So pizza hut, kita dah tahu dah apa function dia. Kalau pizza hut, benefit yang kita dapat adalah uh, pizza lah. A nice pizza. A very delicious pizza. Any, any, any types of pizza you can get from one group. Pizza hut. Okay. Compounds, combination of two or more unexpected words. Red hat. Nampak tu? Red hat. Uh, classical, based on Latin, Greek, Sanskrit. Uh, biasanya, kebanyakan brand name yang banyak kita ambil daripada Latin, Greek, Sanskrit. Eh. Amul, the taste of India. Amul, contoh. So, Arbitrary, real words with no apparent time. So, macam ni kita tengok Apple punya logo. Uh, tak payah pun sebut Apple. A-P-P-L-E. Letak aja. Uh, logo, gambar, apple dah dimakan separuh, tak sampai separuh lah, suku, dah kita tahu. is apple, fanciful, coin words with no obvious meaning, google. Apa ah, maksud google ni? Uh, I think now we, we, we do not know what will be the exact meanings of google. Google, is it google, when you are using google, uh, when, you are, when you are wearing google, you are actually using, you are wearing it because you want to See it clearly in the sea. Maybe. Who knows? Okay. So, brand element concept and the name other than Landor's. Kita guna Lipicot's brand name taxonomy. Okay. Bila you nak buat brand name tu, uh, ada konsep yang kita guna Lipicot's. Selain daripada Landor. Dia yeah, Landor ada, adalah, ini adalah ciri-cirinya bila kita nak buat brand name. Untuk difficult, selain, descriptive, invented, connected, which are before the So, concept behind the name brand awareness, ingat brand awareness. Contohnya, saya dah bagi tadi expansion dia. Kalau kita tengok tadi gambar ni. Uh, kat sini. Okay. Kenapa kita choose brand elements based on this specific criteria sebab kita nak pastikan we can create brand awareness, to measure our deep and breadth of our brand. Ini lah explanation dia. Mana tadi? Dia ulang balik lah. Association. Association pergi balik dekat gambar raja ni kat sini. Uh, this is very useful. Uh, the best that can to explain about the color CVD model. Kalau nak tampak kat bilik pun bagi-bagi. Supaya you ingat. Okay. Uh, contohnya, how how we, we we understand about brand association behind the name or the brand name. Macam ni kita nak faham konsep brand association behind behind uh, we are choosing uh, brand name, brand animal. For example, Skype. Okay, macam ni kita nampak brand association sebab Skype formed from the original Skyper. According to the description of Skype, peer to peer. Sebab tu ada gambar awan ni. Apa tak bentuk awan? Cloud. Sky, peer to peer. Itu datangnya uh, logo dan brand name Sky. Sky, peer to peer. Obsession perfume. Uh, the for obsession perfume is called secret, clever, kind perfume. Fair and lovely. You want to look fair and look lovely. So when you wear this perfume, you become obsession. People obsessed with you. Uh, you pakai je sikit obsession perfume, people will get obsessed with you, get excited with you. And then uh, fair and lovely, you will get that uh, fair when you wear this fair and lovely product and look lovely. Definitely. Okay. Uh, sama juga dengan ni. It's pretty brand and always cool. Contoh-contoh ni lah. Kacau sendiri lah. Faham. Linguistic. Ada kat sini. Okay, so when you want to create brand names, apa yang kena, kena buat? What are the procedures when you want to do brand names? Okay, sebab so one of the element, brand elements, contohnya brand elements, kita kena start dengan the elements. Saya so nak create brand name. So what are the procedures? You must define the objective when you want to choose the brand name. Generate names. Screen initial candidates. Example, cannot pronounce, double meaning, already in use, against the position. You can screen it out. Kena buat observation, screen it out. Kena survey. Study the candidate's name. Uh, kalau you nak guna nama orang, kena kena study lah. Uh, adakah uh, example international legal search, you know for this. 
research and final candidate consumer research banyak sangat kalau you nak guna nama orang names eh for example like um, um, apa contoh nama orang uh, can anyone give me name of the people as the brand name Nilofa ah uh, Nilofa tapi Nilofa is Nilofa not Nilofa right Nilofa Nilofa boleh lah Nilofa Nilofa Bali ada tak lain selain daripada itu Kaili ha apa tu orang sedih tak dengar Kaili Kaili hmm Kaili macam mana Sekejap, buka sikit. Lipstick tu. Lipstick? Kylie. Macam ni je dia? Kylie Jenner. K-Y-L-I-E. The, the sexy girl. Suka. Yeah. Oh, ni eh. Kylie Cosmetic. Oh, hmm. Okay. Ni. Oh, Kylie. 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 Dia, dia apa tu ada uh, what we call it reality show kan? Tradition. 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 Pandai juga saya ni tahu lah juga kan. <laughs> Okey ada tak lagi? Apa lagi? Noraisa. Noraisa. Yes. Noraisa. Noraisa. Apa sya? Kuda Beauty. <laughs> Uda Beauty, yes. Uh, tapi kena, uh, boleh pastikan you kena screen it out lah. It's easy for us lah. Uh. Macam city, city, simply city kan? Simply city. Simply city. Ambil nama city saja. Tak adalah ambil city no. Liza tu. Uh, kenapa kalau city no Liza nak buat brand dia, brand dia ni baik dia letak city no Liza. Tapi kenapa tak nak? Uh, kenapa dia letak simply city? Uh, tak ada sebab ni. So these are some of the uh, things that Uh, the thing about the procedures lah. Okay, ada tak soalan? And that best thing uh, is all about the plan and implement brand in your marketing program. Johnson and Johnson, you are simply Oh, Jimmy Chu, 